When running an assembler, you need to know about all error and warning messages that can come out of it. You've got a few options for controlling how that happens. With NASM, you've got some options about displaying them. With the uppercase X option, you can specify that the error messages be displayed in one of two formats, the VC format, the Visual C format, or the GNU format. GNU is the default. The two formats are very similar, and they both contain the same information. NASM normally sends error messages to standard error for display. Under DOS and Windows, it's difficult to redirect standard error to a file, but you can have the assembler do it for you with the uppercase Z option, which allows you to specify the name of a file that will receive all the error messages or by specifying the S option, you can have errors redirected to standard out. That way, you can easily redirect the stream to wherever you want it. There are a number of warning messages. A warning is a message about some condition that does not prevent the assembler from producing output, but the user should be told about it. They are reported just like errors, but they contain the word warning in the message. The W option is used to enable or disable classes of warning messages. Minus for disable, plus for enable. You can get a list of these class names by using the help option on the command line. If you enable the special class named Error, all warnings will be reported as errors and the assembler will act as if an error occurred. You might want to check the list of warning classes because some of them are disabled by default and you could be doing something where some of them become important for your particular application. These two options can be used to prepend or append the specified string onto all global or external variables. This may seem odd, but let me give you an example of it, what it's used for. Some, but not all, C compilers prepend their global names with an underscore character. Using this option can make the object code compatible. If you have a standard set of options that you specify for all your assembly commands, you can put them in this environment variable, and it will be just as if you put them on the command line. Now, on some systems, embedding a blank inside an environment variable can be a problem. So if the first character is not a minus sign, that character is taken to be the division character. For example, if you want to define these options, but they won't go into the environment variable, you can write it this way without spaces.